Well, folks, I told you in the last video what was going to be in this one, and here it is. A second 8-inch Shugart floppy drive to go in my floppy drive expansion unit for the Model 2. I got this one super cheap. I got it for 20 bucks, and I'll show you why. One thing, you can see there's a lot of rust. There's a lot of rust over there. The uh, it's completely dry here. I think this is old um, lithium grease that's basically turned into a solid. The uh, I can't move. The stepper motor at all, but that's not the worst of it. This is the worst of it. The uh, explanation on eBay for it was some corrosion. I would say, yeah, that's some corrosion, all right. Also, look, every set of pins is bent over everywhere. And if you're wondering if the other side looks like this, I can already tell you, I can tell just by looking about here, it is just as bad. One thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to take a photo, uh, maybe a photo here and a photo there. For one thing, I want to make sure that once I try to straighten these pins, if they break off, I'll know whether or not it's one I need to use for a jumper. Because, you know, I'll have to put the jump, take the jumper off, try to straighten the pins. A lot of corrosion here. This is a capacitor. And it is broken. I don't have a clue on what size it is. I might be able to find out if it's the very same makeup on the other board on the ones that I used. So, let's, uh, let's get this board off so you can see what the other side looks like. Okay, got the right side. Oh boy. Okay. Holy cow. It broke off. Well, it's off. Okay, the board is loose. It's here. Let's try to get this other screw off of this now. I can pull it above the post. Okay, you ready for some corrosion goodness? I told you. <sighs> what they do, sit it on top of a battery under a waterfall? I don't know. But I'm going to start off by using a Q-tip and some vinegar uh, to see what I can get off of that. Wondering if I should just pour some on. Because this is pretty pretty crazy. You can see it, I don't know if you can see it, but it's bubbling over here on the corrosion. I always use vinegar for this stuff. It really helps with uh, say batteries gone bad and the back of something you use. 
just pouring it in there almost completely gets rid of it. And with a little rubbing, you can get it better than you think you can. Okay, I know this is tedious, so I'll bring you back in just a second after I completely try to do the back, and I'll show you what, how, it, how it looks. Okay, unless you're dealing with flat traces on a board, a uh, swab is great for that, but all these through-hole pieces, all the cotton gets stuck on it and everything, so the best thing to do is, let me put a touch more on here, is use a toothbrush. That way you can be a little rougher and not tear anything up. Use a little bit of canned air to get that off of there. See, there's a little bit of cottons right there. There. Quite a bit better. I'll run, I'll run some uh, alcohol across it to get rid of the vinegar and that'll evaporate and we'll take, take a look. I'll also clean this up over here and then I'll bring it back when we start on the other side. Uh, it looks like, yeah, I've got to do it. I've got to do it here too. Look at that. Pretty bad. Okay, I'll bring it back when we start the other side. Okay, here we are. Of course, it's not going to look perfectly new, but the corrosion is gone. All the traces seem to be clean. There's nothing shorting out against something else. May not look pretty, but let's see if that serves. Of course, we've already got, even cleaning it, this capacitor. Is already broken off. I have a replacement. I believe it's a uh, it's 0 0.015 microfarad and a 50 volt. So I'll be replacing that. I'll let you watch. Oh, and the pins. Well, the pins. I've noticed there's some that might stand up, but I've also noticed some that have a crack in them already before they're even tried to stand up and those will those will break when I try to stand them up so so here we go let's see what we can see let's see if you can see what I can see And to get them up off the board, probably a little safer to just move them by hand. That's not bad. Whoa. Ah, that one's already broken. So see, that's going to be, I may have to do it all to all of them. The way they've been completely forced down to the board probably makes straightening them impossible. I mean, when I was over here, let's see. Take a gander. Oh, yeah. This one over here, 
while I was cleaning it, that one broke. If you can see it, see if I can focus for you. Eh, this one, one of the legs are off, so I'm going to have to jump with that. So this is going to be slow and tedious, and I'll bring you back once I get all of them either stood up or soldered across to replace them and have the capacitor in it, and then we'll move on from there. Okay, I unbent the pins as much as possible. Of course, a lot of them already had a crack in them at the base from being smashed against the board all the way. And when you straighten them, they just break off because of that crack. Several of the Terminator pins did that. I got a strip of these guys out of my Arduino stash. I don't know if you guys have ever seen them, but they're available. And I broke off. I'm going to be breaking off a pair of each. And I hope it's somewhat focused. I will simply, without shaking from the coffee, there, put them in there, solder them on the back, and it'll have a decent set of pins again. So I'm going to do all those, and I'll bring you back. Okay, it looks pretty good. Now it has pins like it's supposed to, and uh, I can just put jumpers on it, like, like always, or take them off. Well, the rest is now going to be the main unit itself. Let's see if we can get a little work done on here. Now, first thing I want to try is trying to free up the stepper motor, put a little oil on the shaft that it rides along and I can put some on the drive screw itself come back here let's see oh hey right away well, let's see if I can do it with my hand Some where it's been sitting all this time. <laughs> well, here's one thing. This is the track zero stop switch. It's just a blade of metal and it can't go into the sensor because it's bent upward. So that's as far as it'll go, but it should go farther. So let's get it out. A little bend in it if we can. And there's Rusty. There we go. Now it can go in. I think it's probably the original lithium grease. It's just turned into solid. And then there's some on the shaft down there too. Sorry if all you can see is my hand, but Trying to make it visible. Back down again. Okay. Right near this shaft here. A little light oil back on it. Next, we've got to clean that head. I'll put it where you can see. I hope you can see. All right. That goes way at them. I'm not used to that. At least you can get it out of the way, huh? Go ahead and give me a chance to go ahead and just clean around the thing. Less dirt around the head, the better. 
Uh, let's see. I might unscrew that sensor just to see if it uh, is dirty. It locks in a very tight place, so I don't think I have to worry about any kind of alignment issues taking it out. It doesn't look bad, but it doesn't hurt to clean that as well. Go ahead and clean the other sensor. And then I'll clean this. There we go. That's all that needs to be done. With that. It has a piece of metal that sticks out and makes sure it's alignment is correct and it, it wouldn't fit all the way down unless you had it in that tab hmm. there we go well everything looks okay I hope the uh, hope the class was good on the back side was really not a lot the belt is nice and tight there's no slippage whatsoever so that's that's really good I'm glad of that sorry I cleaned <laughs> you couldn't see it now I uh, put a little sandpaper to that uh. There. Okay, there we go. That's pretty good. Put that back on. There. These, at least from my end, seem pretty clean. And that does too. Well, we can always take a shot and see what happens. Let's put the board back in. So I've got a bit of bump in the road. This, of course, is a sugar drive, just like the one that's in the Model 2. But when they made the disk expansion unit, did they put a sugar drive in there as well? That would make sense. What are you talking about? Andy's made in Texas. We ain't going to put no sugar drive in there. We're going to put in a Texas peripheral. <sighs> yeah. That's what's in here. You don't really notice it when the cage was on, or the uh, case. Really, the only front difference, you, see, you can see that it's taller. You can't really notice that quite as much when it's in the case because it's framed around there. But the, one th the only thing, really, that's different is it's a little taller, and the light... The activity light on the eject button is in the center on Shugert's, and it's at the bottom on Texas Peripheral. So, it's not going to fit. It's bigger. Its chassis is shaped totally different. It will not fit in here whatsoever. But, even though it won't fit in here, it is a Shugert drive. It is the same one as this, and I had no spares. So, it's still good to have a spare for this, because if this failed, I had nothing to replace it. So, the only thing that's left is, since we now have a spare, do we have a working spare? Let's take a look. Okay, first time powering it up. The motor's spinning. Nothing goes boom.
Hey. I each got a light showing an active disk for just a second. That one's running over and over because it has a disk in it. This one does not. It did what normally happens to a floppy when a system's being booted up. Let's see if we can get anything to show that it does what it's supposed to, at least partway. Uh, let's see. Here's a few floppy diagnostics. We're going to try the exerciser. Way I can take part of it and just simply make it move the way it's supposed to. I gotta tell it the drive type, which is Shugert, and tell it which drive we want to deal with, and that's gonna be number two. A. Well, it pulled it down and says it's accessing it, but let me see. Carriage check. It's doing what it's supposed to, going from front to back. Excellent. That's exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Let's see. Anything else we can tell without a disk in it? See if it'll tell me what its speed is. Should be... 360 plus or minus 8, and actually, it's 379. I could stand to slow it down just a hair. Okay, I just put a disk in there. And the sugar drive. I'm going to quit the DOS. My keys are touching now that I've replaced all the, uh, all the pads underneath. Format two. Let's see if it'll do anything. It takes so long for the format startup. It makes you scared there's something going on right. But it says it's formatting. Track five, track six. Let's take a look at the drive itself. The head's advancing in steps just like it should be as it's formatting a disk. Well, so far that looks just awesome. I'll let this happen. I'll probably speed it up so you're not bored to death. And we'll see if it will read as a newly formatted disk once it's done. It's done. Zero flawed tracks. System tracks are now being written to the disk. Hey, it says it's done. Didn't come up with an error. Let's see what it says on a directory search. Bingo. Got the proper response to reading a newly formatted disk. It worked. I can't believe that this thing worked after only cleaning it and changing a capacitor. Cleaning it, lubing it. It took quite a while to clean all that corrosion off, and I was very careful, but I don't know about you, but I usually don't get something to work straight out of the bin, that's for sure. Well, at least I now have a working sugar drive. Now I'm going to have to keep on the lookout if I want to put any in the expansion unit for a Texas peripheral, they'll probably pop up on eBay as often as unicorns. But I do have a working spare for the main unit, and that is a big plus. I hope uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you weren't bored. Hope you liked what you saw. Uh, subscribe 
if you're so inclined, then uh, hey, thanks for watching.